All right, this is part two of our ongoing series on how to help people that are uh, living on Social Security alone. If uh, you're watching this, there is part one. So please go back to uh, part one, watch that, and then uh, move on to this one, part two. Okay, we are at number 11. So extra help with your Medicare prescription drugs. For those people on Medicare, it's estimated that people save anywhere about $5,300. CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Studies Services, determined that the average savings on this is about $5,300. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. It's also called the LIS, uh, Low Income Subsidy. And this is administered by the Social Security Administration, like a lot of uh, Medicare type things. Um, and it's one of the easiest applications you can do in all of Social Security. Social Security has some crazy applications, but this one is uh, really, really easy. Basically, what it is, is you apply through Social Security. You can actually do it online. It's very, very quick. And if your annual income and resources, again, this is a low income subsidy. Um, are within the allowable limits for 2024. We're looking at a 24, excuse me, 21,870 for an individual. If you're a married couple, um, you're looking at about $29,580. They go by the previous years, uh, how much you made the previous year. And the resources, you have to be below about $1,600, $1,700 for single, it's about $33,000 for uh, um, a married couple. So there is an income and a resource limit, and there's tons of questions about, okay, what counts as income, what counts as a resource, and, and what do I say about all these programs? Apply. You know, be honest, tell them your actual income, because they can look it up in Social Security, can look it up in the system. You know, as soon as you apply for this, they have access, you have to give them um, uh, the permission to um, access some of your accounts. And so they can immediately see, you know, if you got, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars in the bank and they will deny your application. Um, so be honest, tell them what uh, your income and resources. And if you qualify, then your prescription drugs will be, a lot of them will be zero. You'll pay, they just changed the law. They made this a lot better recently. Uh, the plan deductible will be zero. Um, it, there's going to be a reduced amount for generic and brand name um, drugs. And one of the things I tell people about this, about uh, um, the prescription drug plan, is people tell me all the time, they say, well, no, I'm not taking any drugs. They're 65 years old and they just apply for Medicare. And, you know, they apply for Medicare Part A and then Part B and they call me up and they, you know, want, OK, what's Part C? What's Part D? What are Medigaps and all that? Um, if you're interested in all that, um, I'm also licensed in all 50 states to enroll people in Medicare. Um, so I did that the first year because a lot of people requested. I help them with that. Uh, but uh, um I've kind of moved away from that personally um, because I want to kind of do the wide range of activities, do videos like this and, you know, answer people, answer people's questions. Um, but people still need correct information on, on Medicare and all the rest of it. So what I've done is I've set up a network of people that I've kind of vetted and that I trust um, and that are not pushy and um, that are what, I, what are brokers. When you talk to any type of Medicare or any type of insurance, you know, because after all, Social Security is insurance. You know, if you, if you got a Medicare card, look on your Medicare card. It'll say hospital insurance and medical insurance. RSI is, that's what retirement survivors insurance is, disability insurance, SSDI, so Social Security Disability Insurance. SSI is not an insurance, that is a welfare program, as I mentioned. But all of these are insurance. You pay a premium essentially all your life through FICA, and then you collect it when you turn 65 or you became disabled or surviving you know, spouse or children or whatever the case may be. So Social Security is essentially insurance. And, but it's not enough. So, and I can tell you 
through uh, the one thing about working at Social Security, you know, for you know decades and helping hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out in their critical points of their life when you know they're filing for disability, they lose a loved one, they're going for retirement, is when they come into Social Security, we're able to look at their entire life. You know, we print off their entire work history, where they worked and how much they made. We ask them about marriages, you know, because we want to find out entitlement for if anybody else is entitled on the record. So we, we've got the entire lay of the land. And uh, that's, you know, good because we're, you know, being thorough. But it's also kind of, you know, we, we can see um, kind of a cautionary tale of uh, what people you know, um, prepared for or didn't prepare for or couldn't prepare for. And uh, I, I can't tell you how many times people have said, I wish someone had told me that last year or, you know, six months ago or before I filed or 30 years ago. Um, I've got a video that I made about, uh, it was kind of directed to people uh, under 50 years old. Um, based on my decades of experience helping people out and them telling me, oh, I wish someone had told me that long time ago. I made a video on that, putting all that information in that video. So I'll, I'll put that under um, in, in, uh, in the description uh, down below. Um, but so, uh, so in terms of Medicare, if you're interested, I've got a network of people throughout the country that I know and trust. And so if you're looking um, for someone to help you sign up for Medicare Part D, uh, Part C, which is the Medicare Advantage plans, the, the Medicare Supplement plans, also called the Medigap plans, which as I'll talk about, I recommend those over a Medicare Advantage plan, um, if you can afford it, if it's within your budget. Um, and it's no extra cost to you. It's if you sign up directly with a company or any other broker um, in the country. I, and I recommend brokers uh, rather than agents. It, it, there's a fine difference. An agent, it's kind of like the old Henry Ford thing. You know, you can have any color of car you want as long as it's black. If, if you call, you know, XYZ insurance company and you ask them, you know, what's the best plan? Obviously they're going to say XYZ insurance company is the best one. Yeah. But a broker shops around A broker doesn't work for the insurance companies. They work for you. And so Medicare companies, life insurance, burial insurance, you know, whatever the case may be, they, work for you and they look at all the different companies and they give you your options. So that's why I always recommend. So if you've got someone that you know and trust, beautiful, use them. Um, but if you don't and you want a recommendation, um, please uh, fill out the, uh, the form below and uh, request um, that information. I'll have someone to contact you. And I mean, to, to be completely above board, that helps out our mission here as well, because they support us so you you know um i refer we refer you to whatever person in dallas or miami or eugene oregon or wherever the case may be and you know they uh support our channel so it's a it's kind of win-win it doesn't cost you anything extra at all period all right so medicare prescription drug um even if you're not taking prescription drugs and it looks as though you might be eligible to get this, apply. Even if you say, well, um, I don't need really help with prescription drugs because I'm, you know, I've already got Part D and, you know, I've got this one generic drug and it only costs like a buck a month or it's, you know, I get it free. So I don't need extra help. Well, that's today. What happens when something happens, you fall or, you know, you get sick or, something and the doctor gives you something very expensive, some, you know, brand name drug that costs, you know, $600 a month or something. So that's why you should apply for the extra help now to go through the whole, you know, kind of bureaucratic rigmarole, get it approved, and then it'll just sit on your record. It'll sit on your Social Security Medicare record and it'll just sit there and obviously you'll get the free premium. Even if, you, even if you're paying, you know, 50 cents a month there's a there's a medicare part d plan out there that costs like a 50 cents a month a dollar a month or something like that i i'd be kind of careful of those that's a recent development um you know hey 50 cents a month dollar a month i've helped many people enroll in those but i always tell them 
then watch out because um, these, the, the people I enrolled in these particular plans didn't really have any drugs. So they're like, hey, 50 cents. And you know, next year, I'll reevaluate, reevaluate those every year. Because you're like, hey, it's only a buck. But if you get a drug that's more expensive, you know, the, the dollar plan, that drug might be $600, but you might get another plan that's, you know, $20 a month, but the drug is only $200, you know? So just don't look at the, the monthly premium. However, if you're getting this low income subsidy, the extra help, then don't have a premium. And that's a beautiful thing. Again, that's a, a recent change based on the Inflation Reduction Act. So that is a beautiful thing. All right. That is a number 11. Number 12. We are just rolling through these. Um, we've got, I've got a, got a whole lot more. All right. Um, to, to stay on prescription drugs, not only with those. So if you have even more issues with prescription drugs, there are state prescription drug assistance programs throughout the states. Um, in almost, I think it's pretty much in every state. So it's a, a state prescription drug assistance. So how do you get there? You contact your state. It's usually through the welfare, social services. Um, it's this uh, SHIP, it's called, um, State Health Insurance Program. And they're, they're volunteers. Um, a lot of the, the people that man the, uh, um, the SHIP phones are volunteers. So... Uh, um, just kind of be careful. So I've had a lot of experience, you know, working with some of these state volunteers and uh, some of them are awesome, but sometimes they kind of give out the incorrect, give out incorrect information. So just, you know, uh, trust, but verify it was a little, the old Reagan thing and, you know, Gorbachev and everything. All right. Um, let's see. Um, another Medicare type thing, Medicaid. As I mentioned, I work for social services and so I've adjudicated a lot of Medicaid um, issues. All right, if uh, you can, uh, again, Medicaid is a state program. So there's a lot of people kind of misidentify, misunderstand Medicare versus Medicaid. Medicare is a federal program administered by CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and you know the signing up and all that kind of stuff is given to Social Security. And so that is the national federal Medicare system. It has Part A, Part B, Part C, Part D. Um, the Medigap and the Medicare supplements are traditional insurance and like I said, those are the ones I, rec I recommend. And you watch all my videos, I always recommend those. Um, but, okay, so that's Medicare. Medicaid is administered through the states. But, you know, the, with the help of federal funding, depending on the, the uh, particular states. Um, some states get more funding. The other states get less funding. Okay, so Medicaid is a state program. And what a lot of people don't understand is you can have Medicare and Medicaid. So you can have Medicare, again, Medicare, uh, there's deductibles for part A, and there's a big co-insurance for part B, again, that 20%. Um, and so that's why people get like a part C or a Medicare supplement and, you know, the part D and all that to fill all the, uh, the gaps. Uh, there are six major gaps of part A and part B. You can watch my videos on, uh, on Medicare and how that all works. Um, but people that can't afford that, for instance, the 20%, what they can do is they can apply for Medicaid. And so there's millions of people throughout the country that have Medicare and Medicaid. Again, you can have both of them. So, and one of the, the beautiful things is there's this program called the Medicare Savings Program. And the Medicare Savings Program is, it's adjudicated, it's, it's federal funding, but it's adjudicated by the state. So you apply through your state, the Medicaid through your state, social services or welfare or whatever the state, uh, your particular state calls them. You call them up 
and you just say, hey, I've got Medicare. I can't afford my Part B premium. I can't afford the co-insurance at 20% and all the rest of it if something happens. Um, and they will take an application for Medicaid. And there are several levels. There's QMB and SLMB and QIs and yeah, it's uh, you know it's government. Again, what do you what do you expect? Um, but there's all kinds of different levels. So it, depending on your particular state, some states are a little bit stingier than others. But if you're approved, then the state Medicaid will pay for your Part B premium and cover a lot of the other costs. Again, depending on what level you're approved at. And what do I say? If you're struggling, if you know somebody struggling to, you know, the Part B and, you know, they're you know, getting sick and they don't have very low income and they're paying all their money, you know, on their premium, their Part B premium. And, you know, because of that, they're not able to eat a healthy diet. Tell them, please, please, please call your state Medicaid office and apply for Medicaid and the state will pay for the premium and that'll put another 170 you know next year 180 190 again dollars back in their pocket which is a uh, it's a beautiful thing and you know some people are you know i talk to people and they're very proud and you know this, i don't want to apply for welfare you know, i paid for part a and i've paid for medicare throughout my life so that's an, i'm entitled to that so i'm going to get that and i don't want to take medicaid i've heard this you, you wouldn't believe how many times i've heard this which is you know it's a, it's a great sentiment but um these are people that really need these benefits and you know it, it's there for them but uh, you get people i've talked to many people they say yeah you know, I, 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 you know, I've, I, I can eat, you know, w one meal a day and, you know, I, I can, you know, not do this and I can not do this other thing. And because there's other people out there that have it a lot harder than I do. So they refuse the assistance that's going to make their life a little bit easier because they don't want to take it away from someone that they think may need it more, which is, I mean, yeah, you got to give it to them. That's, I mean, you can't argue with that. It's a beautiful sentiment, but I still tell them, you know, you're, you're an awesome person. You're just a phenomenally awesome person, but you know, uh, apply, please, you know, make your life a little bit easier. Um, so please apply. The most profitable companies in the country, corporations in the country, you've got, you know, McDonald's, Walmart and all these, I hate to, you know, call out names. Um, but, you know, they're, they, you know the, these companies are, you know, not paying their workers living wages and these workers are having to go on to food stamps and Medicaid and stuff. And uh, so, you know, I, I did a video a little while ago. You can see it. It's uh, uh, the Walmart, one of the Walmart heiresses who lives in, in Vegas, got a humongous house in Vegas. And she's got a, just a phenomenal, one of the biggest yachts in the world. And uh, where do you think the money, you know, a lot of that money, you know, in some respects, um, not paying the workers enough and moving the costs onto the welfare rolls, you know, not providing the health insurance, not providing enough for the person to live on. So the person has to go to Medicaid and stuff. So, you know, in some respects, those, you know, that uh, billion dollar yacht is funded by, you know, state welfare, national welfare. Medicaid and all the rest of it. So yeah, but that's just my two cents. And if, you know, anyway, so there's that. So watch that video if you're interested in that. All right. That is uh, number 13. Um, number 14 is, as I mentioned, this part C, um, which is Medicare Advantage. Um, there's a lot of controversy about Medicare Advantage. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Um, it's not a perfect program. So Medicare Advantage is Medicare, uh, they call it Part C. There's some uh, politicians that are saying, hey, it should not be called Part C because it's essentially the kind of a, a, an entry into the privatization of Medicare. Um, so, but if, again, as you watch my videos, I'm, I'm completely... Um, open about this. I recommend Medicare supplement plans, also called Medigap plans, but they're, they come with a monthly premium. 
So depending on your state and your age and everything like that, and sometimes they're very, very difficult to get into if you don't apply for them at 65 because there's medical underwriting, health underwriting, everything. And so there's just, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that can't get a Medicare supplement plan. And you say, well, you know, it's because of the monthly premium. And you've got Medicare Advantage plans that have zero premium. And they've got all these extra benefits, you know, dental and vision and gym membership and all that other kind of stuff. But then you've got all of the problems with the Medicare Advantage pre-authorizations and AI, you know, denying people and, you know, networks. And, you know, if you, know, if you, ne get, if you never get sick, Medicare Advantage is the way to go. Zero premium for the rest of your life. And one day you shuffle off your motor coil and you're done. Um, but if you get sick, that monthly premium that you paid might actually become cheaper. It, again, it, it's a roll of the dice. That's, you know, in all insurance is a roll of the dice. Um, so I've got tons of videos of that on all of that. Um, some, I would be careful, cautious. Some of the uh, Medicare Advantage plans also pay for your Part B premium. Um, you know, but these are, these are, you know, billion dollar, you know, humongous insurance companies, Medicare insurance companies, and you don't get to be a billion dollar, you know, hundreds of millions of dollar Medicare insurance company without, you know, figuring out the numbers. So they're not going to give you extra money every month just for signing up, um, without taking it from some of the other places. And you say, wait a second, okay, how, um, how, how, do, they, how do they have zero premium? Um, they have zero premium because how the whole thing works is all that money you pay into FICA taxes, you know, part of it goes to social security tax and part of it goes to Medicare. So you've paid into Medicare for decades and decades and decades. And then once you become eligible for Medicare at 65, then you go and you apply, you know, you to get your part A and your part B, and then you, okay, you've got all these gaps. How are you going to fill the gaps? Are you going to do a Medigap or are you, or are you going to do a Medicare Advantage? If you decide to do a Medicare Advantage, the zero premium, and you're like, wow, how does that company make money? Well, as soon as you enroll with that particular company, they take their cup and they go to Washington and they say, hey, we just enrolled John Smith or Jane Smith um, in Topeka. And, you know, all that money that they paid into FICA, you know, Medicare, all those decades, you know, give us that, give us part of that every year. And there's all kinds of different variables of how much they get, um, but give us that money. And then that, that's where they get money. So it's your money. It's, you know, it's not coming, you know, zero premium. They're giving us a free. No, 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 none of it. You know, you've already paid for it. You've paid in advance. You're just getting, it. and that's. One of the things on Medicare Advantage uh, that I'll talk about, uh, um, well, let me talk about it right now. Um, if you're on Medicare Advantage, please, um, I'll put this, uh, this is, uh, um, I think we're still on number 14. I'll put a link down there. Um, make sure you get everything you're entitled to. I talk to people all the time. They have a Medicare Advantage and they've had it for years and years and years. And they're not taking advantage of, you know, whatever benefits of transportation and, you know, vision, getting glasses and getting hearing aids and getting, you know, different things. And, uh, you know, the plans change on a continuing basis. So you have to keep up on a continuing basis. So, you know, these companies, again, these companies aren't giving you any of this stuff for free. You've paid for all of it. So anytime the plan changes in january you go in there you can go to the link in there and it'll show you what your plan is and what kind of benefits and just you know oh i get glasses you know twice a year oh, okay well let me get on and make schedule an appointment to go go get new glasses oh, i got hearing aid okay let me go oh gym membership all right heading to the gym so uh yes use those benefits again he's not giving it to you for free you've already paid for it get it oh another cautionary tale once you turn 65 um it, if you've already turned 65, you know this, you become the most popular person in the country. You're, I've done another video on this. Um, see if pattern here. Um, when you turn 65, based on all your keystrokes that you've done, you know, people follow your keystrokes. Anytime you push that little cookie thing, you say, I accept all the cookies. They follow your, 
your keystrokes and you type in there that, oh, you know, I'm turning 65 and what do I look for Medicare? That goes someplace and a broker, data broker gets it and they sell that information to, you know, Medicare insurance companies and then they just inundate you with everything and everybody wants to take you to the, you know, the, the turning 65 Medicare dance. Um, if you want to, you know, avoid all of the actors and the comedians and the football stars and all those, you know, giant private equity firms. And um, again, put the uh, the link down below, click that, and uh, I will put you in touch with uh, someone uh, local to you, um, someone in your state um, or area, and that'll help you navigate the entire thing. Again, it's completely, it's uh, no charge to you. Um, but what a lot of these Medicare insurance agents do is they're very, very pushy, which I, I, I hate. Sometimes they um, do not good, particularly. So if, if you're on, you got a lot of people on home health care. So you've got if, if you're on home health care and you have Medicaid. Home health care agencies prefer Medicaid. Most of them hate Medicare Advantage plans. Um, they would prefer you stay on Medicare and Medicaid, original Medicare and Medicaid, and because it's just, you know, they're a business too. So the home health care agencies, the ones that come out to your house. So if you have a home health care agency that comes out to your house, you know, does some cleaning and, you know, does, you know, it's companionship or, you know, whatever they do and you like them and it's a good company and the person that comes out, you're, you know, built a, re a relationship with them and they're really good and awesome and you don't want to lose them. If you switch to a Medicare Advantage plan, that company might drop you. So that person might not come out to your house anymore. Again, this is really on a case by case basis, but the, but the problem is, is the company, they get paid directly from Medicaid. They get paid, usually get paid more and they get paid quicker. If you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, Medicare Advantage plans, a lot of them, they do have health, home health care agencies, but they're very difficult. They have very, very limited. And, the, and I've, from personal experience, people talk to me, they, you know, they, oh yeah, you said they had, you know, home health care, but they, you know, they don't. Because all the, the home health care agencies in most areas want only Medicaid and Medicare patients, people to take care of. And so everybody avoids this one. You know, they, they you know, add them to the books, but they always focus on this. So be very, so long story short, just be very, very careful. If you, you or someone you know have home health care and you like it, um, do not, because some of these Medicare Advantage plans, you know, they, they, you know, they give you these extra benefits, the gym membership and the, the vision and the hearing. And also these flex cards, these grocery cards you hear about, they advertise them. Yeah, ad nauseum, literally. I want to throw up ad nauseum. Um, sorry, old Marine Corps thing. Um, but do you want, um, okay, these flex cards. I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but let's talk about these flex cards here. Um, the, the, the flex cards or grocery cards, um, they're advertised. Um, they just changed the law. The FCC, the government has just changed the, the law that um, it, previously you've had these companies on TV and the internet and they say, hey, get your grocery card, you know, $500 a month and, you know, pink unicorns and free ice cream for life and call us up. And so they, you call them up and they say, oh, well, yeah, no, no pink unicorns are $500 a month for you because you don't live in this one zip code in West Virginia. You live anywhere else in the United States. Um, so, but it's kind of a, you know, bait and switch type situation where they, you know, entice you with this, but then you call them up and, and say, oh yeah, I don't. so the government has finally come down and said, yeah, you can't do that. You can only advertise things that actually exist in the places you're advertising. So that's, that's good. Um, but I'm sure there's still going to be out there that, you know, people out there that, you know, do it. But, uh, so in terms of people with home health care, you know, um, you know, again, is a $50 grocery card or a hundred dollar grocery card. 
um, worth losing your home health person coming in. So just 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 be careful on that. All right. And then, you know, be careful on the uh, the these flex cards and, uh, um, you know, what's the old saying? If uh, if it sounds too good to be true, then it is. But but they, they are a reality. People ask, oh, are, are these flex cards really? And again, I've done a video on this. Um, yes, there, there are flex cards out there. Uh, when I was doing, you know, enrolling people in Medicare, I've signed many people up for, um, you know, Medicare, uh, a Medicare Advantage plan, particularly these dual plans for the people. If you have Medicare and Medicaid, you're eligible for a Medicare Advantage called a dual plan. And these dual plans are, are you know, really, really good as compared to the regular ones. They've got a lot more benefits, you know, because the... You know, there, you got two sources of, of funding in there for uh, the insurance company. So they're able to provide a lot more benefits. They get a lot more money for the government and therefore they're able to, uh, you know, offer a lot more benefits and it's good for you. So, yeah, if, if you have Medicare or Medicaid, you're eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan, a dual plan if you're in the right category of Medicaid and the benefits are awesome. Um, they're you know, so, but it really depends on your particular system or your, your particular state, um, where you're at. And so you just have to evaluate what, uh, um, you know, what I shouldn't say awesome. The, the Medicare, which is great. Uh, Medicare, the CMS, um, they have probably the most str stringent, regulations on um, marketing Medicare Advantage plans, um, which is awesome um, because over the years, over the decades since the invention of these, um, there's been a lot of hype and people have, you know, kind of not above board and they hype these up and they push people and do all kinds of nefarious things. And so the government has come down and really come down and said, okay, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this other thing. Like I just said, awesome. So I shouldn't really say awesome because awesome is a, is a word that denotes something, you know? So yeah. So, okay. Strike my awesome. I, that's how stringent and uh, these, uh, the marketing is for Medicare advantage in particular. So, um, so, which is great, which is, is very, very good. Again, you know, working for social security administration, I've had, unbelievable amount of people come into social security and they say, Hey, you know, I just got switched over to another plan and I went to my doctor's not covered anymore. I go to, um, you know, my went to my pharmacy and, uh, my drugs aren't covered anymore. The, you know, but the person told me there were and yada, yada, yada. And social security really can't do anything about a Medicare advantage plan. You have to get, you know, again, find a, find a broker, um, that, you know, and trust, and uh, get them to evaluate your your Medicare plan. Um, and again, if uh, you want, give us uh, give us a call or fill out the uh, the form below, and uh, tell us where you're at, and then we'll put you in touch with uh, someone that we uh, we recommend and know and trust. All right, um, that was number fifteen. Let's go on to number sixteen. How are we looking for time? I think we can do um, another one here. Save taxes. Um, how do you save taxes on Social Security? Um, some people pay taxes on Social Security. Uh, the state taxes, there's what, 38 states that don't tax Social Security. So I guess, you know, if you don't want to live in a state, um, if your state taxes Social Security, then you might want to consider moving to a state that does not tax uh, Social Security. There's 38 states that don't tax. Um, and up to 85% of um, your Social Security benefits can be taxed depending on how much you make. If, if, if all you're earning is Social Security alone, then you're probably not going to be taxed. And there's all kinds of, uh, um, you know, it, one, one thing on... You know, social media, again, social media, I think is great for something like this, but there's a lot of people take advantage of it and promise, you know, the world and free unicorns and ice cream. Um, 
there's always, you know, politicians. There's some politician in some little small town of, you know, Paris, Texas. Um, hi, Paris, Texas. That's where I went to high school. Population 25,148. I think it's still the same population since I graduated high school 10 years ago. All right. Maybe a little bit earlier than 10 years ago. But anyway, um, but there's always some politician somewhere in the country that, you know, in order to appeal to their constituency to try to drum up vote, particularly when it's election season, they they will, you know, introduce some bill to Congress that will never, ever, ever pass. But it looks as though, you know, they can go back, to, you know, to Paris, Texas and say, hey, look what I'm trying to do for you guys. Vote for me. Um, and people on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok or wherever the case may be, they'll pick it up and they'll put some sensational, uh, you know, thumbnail, as they call it, on the video and say, hey, you're going to get $2,400 more next, you know, next month and you're going to get, you know, free ice cream for your life. And, and then you watch it and it's like it's some bill that some guy, you know, some congressperson in, you know, Paris, Texas passed that nobody's ever going to pass that, you know, introduce that nobody's going to pass. So watch out for uh, kind of all that hype there. Um, but as of right now, as of the 1980s, um, you will have to pay taxes on your Social Security. And you know, I'm not a tax expert, but um, by law, up to 85% of that. So if you make a thousand, you know, a thousand dollars, up to 85% of that can be taxed and not, you know, 85% tax rate, it's 85% of that can be taxed on whatever, you know, if you you're paid 10% or 20%, or 30%, then 85% of, of that. And again, it really depends on your other income, how much you're receiving Social Security and your other income. So make sure um, you talk to your tax professional about that. That will do it. Remember, um, share, uh, subscribe, like. Uh, if you like the video, please, uh, thanks below there. Um, cup of coffee, beer, be nice. Um, I'll just keep making more and more videos. We'll see you at, uh, in, in part three. Take care. Have a beautiful day.